speaking to me now, professional boxer Brandon Scott. Um, Brandon, last time I spoke to you, probably oh, two years ago maybe, yeah. you, were, you were a young amateur boxer looking forward to going pro. Tell us what's happened in the meantime. Well, I was still waiting to hit poop with you when you last interviewed me. <laughs> but uh, no, since then I um, had a lot more international fights, boxing loads more international tournaments, and I've uh, recently had my pro debut. One of the best, of, I say one of, the best day of my life, without a doubt. So uh, I think I last spoke to you, was it three years ago in Gary Lockett's gym? Yeah. Um, I mean, how many more amateur fights do you have, or do you box many tournaments or represent Wales or anything? Yeah, I, I had about maybe another 20 fights after that, but I'd say a lot of them were international fights. Yeah. I boxed in um, a tournament abroad in the Odevelos Box Cup. Uh, I got a silver medal in that, but you know I, I boxed well out there. Uh, I had boxed for Ireland. I boxed against Ireland. Uh, one against Ireland. Boxed against England. I boxed, oh, loads of international fights. Price, you know, priceless experience. You can't put can't put a price on experience like that. But I was hoping to have more, to be honest with you. But you know, because COVID came in and everything, it, it kind of put a bit of a delay on my amateur career. But I always said, you know, when I'm 18, I want to turn pro. And I uh, stuck to my word, and I'm with the best trainer in the UK, Gavin Rees. There's lots of good professional boxing trainers in Wales at the moment. Um, why did you decide to go with Gavin? Well, like I said, you know, people say styles make fights in boxing. I think that kind of blend can be with trainers too. I don't think you can say this trainer's better than that trainer because I think every trainer is more suited to a certain person. But uh, I came up with Mano who was doing lockdown. I trained every day through lockdown, hard, it was stupid because by the end of lockdown I was, I was a bit fed up of boxing, but uh, Mano plagued me to come up here, and I always say Mano's like my guardian angel when it comes mm -hmm. to boxing, but uh, he plagued me, he said, you're coming up Gavin's gym, so he nagged me, nagged me, nagged me, and he got me up here, and the first session I had with Gavin, it, there was no like introduction phase needed, it was straight in, there was banter straight away, we clicked on the pads when, when I was sparring, he was giving me great advice, and I just kind of knew, I was like, this is where I want to be. And this now, the Rocks gym, like, this is like my second home now. So, like I said, I owe it to Maro for bringing me up here, but I couldn't be happy with the team I've got around me. The fact that Gavin's a former world champion, British champion, European champion, does that make a difference when you listen to his advice when he's training you and cornering you and pointing things out in the gym? Yeah, of course it does. You know, obviously, I'm not, I'm not going to question what Gavin, what Gavin says to me. If he says to me, do anything, I'll do it. He tells me to dye my hair green, I'll dye my hair green. But, uh, you know, obviously, you've got loads of respect for him for what he's achieved. But I think what really, really gives me the respect to listen off Gavin is when he spars us all. And he spars me, and he just beats me up, and I'm just like, mid, you know, mid-process of it. I'm just like, yeah, he's good. And then he's, he doesn't just tell me what I need to do better. He does it to me, if that makes sense. So it's, it's all well and good telling me what to do, but when you're having it done to you, I was like, yeah, all right, fair enough, it works. <laughs> you had your professional debut last week, or week for last, whenever it was. Um, tell us about the whole experience. Oh, it was unreal. Um, obviously, I had my home show, Swansea. I saw, well, I saw over 250 tickets, and uh, the atmosphere was booming. And I remember I got into the building, and I, I was nervous. I was getting ready to go into a fight. And I got in and Lee said to me, um, your main event. And I was like, ah, yeah, good one. Yeah, main event, me main event. He went, no, dead serious. I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm main event. I'm headlining the bill. He was like, yeah. So I didn't believe him. So I went and spoke to the guy who was organizing. And he went, yeah, yeah, your main event. I was like, why the, my main <laughs> event? And I, for those who don't know, I walked out in a full Darth Vader costume. <laughs> and I thought, talk about adding pressure. All I could think about is if I lose, I'm going to look like such an idiot. But uh, no. I walked out to the ring and it was I, was, I was nervous before, I don't get me wrong, I was nervous, but as soon as I started walking to the ring, it went from me feeling nervous to, I was like, I was made for this. And I was looking at him and I was like, you're, you're getting it, you're getting it. <laughs> and then the fight started and I've always known my style is more pretty to, I'm suited to the professional ranks, but I didn't think I'd feel as comfortable as I was because I'm not tooting my own horn here, but I, I had 800 people screaming my name and chanting me, you know, for any, anyone headlining for their professional debut, that, that would get to them, wouldn't it? Then I, I'm an 18-year-old boy. You know, I, look, I got ID for 15 the other day. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not, like, I don't look mature, but I boxed, I kept my composure. I, you know, looking back on my performance, I didn't do anything bad, but there was definitely things I could have done better, if that makes sense. 
So you wait till the second one now. A lot of boxers say that when the crowd cheer and shout, they don't hear it. Was that a case for you or not? I was. It was all... It was all blended into one, and it was they were chanting my name. They were like, Brandon, Brandon. <laughs> I, I, I felt like a god. I was like, yeah. But there was one voice. I think I think my, my mother's or my sister's that was echoing over everyone else's. I could hear, hit him, hit him. I was like, oh, I forgot about that one. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I felt I handled the crowd well. And, uh, you know, I had loads of people telling me they felt the crowd made them rush their work. So I went in there knowing I couldn't let the crowd rush, like, you know, couldn't let the crowd dictate how I performed, if that makes sense. So I went out there and I just, I did what I did in training and sparring. When are you in action again next, Brandon? Uh, I spoke to Lee and he said there's a chance in August, but if not, there's 1,000% a bill in September in the same place, I think, but obviously cheaper tickets, I think, because uh, I don't think the food was too great, but I know the atmosphere was amazing. So I'll tell you what, I sold 250 tickets for my, for my last fight. I'm going to sell more for this one. Okay, mate. Uh, it's good to have a chance to catch up with you after a couple, good couple of years. And it seems you're very excited about your pro career. And I look forward to watching you progress. Thank you very much, Kuhn. You haven't aged at all. <laughs> Thank you.